it's Way Up with Angela Yee. It's a Wealth Wednesday, and I got Will Roundtree here with me, full-time CEO. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and um, I'm excited to talk about one of my favorite things to discuss is real estate. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about where um, your whole background comes from, because that's always important to our listeners. You know, what makes somebody an expert in real estate? So... Uh- I honestly don't even like using the word expert, guru, mm-hmm. or none of that. I think it's really all about experience. Right. And so I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I was told, just like everybody else, Angela, like, go to school, get the good grades, get the good job. But in this generation, that don't work anymore. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to find something that would put me on a path of really creating something. And it takes me back to a story back in 2003 um, my grandfather actually tried to give me 45 houses. Ooh. My grandfather was... He had a fifth grade education, but he owned 45 houses and three car washes. That's amazing. And I turned them down because the houses were in the hood. They were, quote unquote, raggedy. And and I didn't know the value of real estate then. And as I look back, that portfolio would have been worth over five million dollars today. What did he do with the houses? Then? Well, he he liquidated everything okay. as he so got he was older. Like, I can give it to you yeah. or I can just sell it. Right. And so going through that journey and not knowing, you know, what that value of that was, I went just like everybody else work, uh, eventually got into entrepreneurship in 2003. Ended up moving to Las Vegas in 2005. Mm -hmm. But when I got to Vegas, I found out why life was difficult. I had bad credit. (laughs) You know, in there. (laughs) And even before you get into that, I want to flash back to what your grandfather did, because, you know, it might not have gone well back then if you didn't understand the value and kept it up. Because I'll say this, like the first house I ever bought, I had an opportunity to buy a house in Brooklyn. Um, You know, my friend had a family member who passed and they gave the properties to them and they just wanted to sell everything off. Correct. And so they were going to give it to me at such a, it was, I think, $699,000, which in Brooklyn was amazing. A huge house with a garage, a driveway, everything. And at that time, it was my first house. And I was like, I don't know, you know, what to do with this. This isn't what I necessarily wanted. Like, if I would have had that opportunity later, it would have been great. But I don't think that I would have been able to do what I needed to do because I was so new at it. Correct. And so I think sometimes timing is important, too, because sometimes we kick ourselves for not knowing at the time that we had an opportunity what to do, but not knowing what to do could have made things even worse. Well, not only yeah. timing, I think it's a mindset, too. Mm-hmm. I wasn't prepared. Yeah, and, so, and that's why I say timing, because yeah. I just wasn't in that space. Yeah, but I tell people I'm actually thankful that happened because now it forced me to learn what not to do. And I right. think that's the difference when... People saying they're scared of failure. I'm like, how can you be scared to fail at something that you're already failing at? <laughs> so right. The worst thing you do lessons. is not even try. Not even try. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so go ahead. So now you moved. So I moved to Las Vegas, found out that having bad credit is expensive. <laughs> you know, couldn't rent an apartment without putting two times the deposit down. Mm. Couldn't r- buy a vehicle without needing a co-signer. Definitely can't buy a house without. Especially now. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I remember I having a, a mentor who said, well, eventually credit will become the new dollar. So once I started to figure out that I need to fix my credit, it took me two years. I owed everybody, including dogs. <laughs> like, I, I owed everybody some money. And so got my credit fixed, and then I was able to buy a vehicle with no money down. It blew my mind. Mm-hmm. I was able to purchase my first home in 2013. And coming from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, owning a home was something I never even imagined. Yes. And I so then imagine. I started to learn that 90% of successful, wealthy, and affluent individuals own real estate. Mm-hmm. So I said, I have to figure out how to buy real estate, but I didn't have a lot of money until I read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad I by Robert Kiyosaki, yep. where he talked about using OPM, other people's money. And so essentially what he does is he goes to the bank and leverages the bank's money to invest in real estate because the bank isn't running out of money. Right. Well, at least we hope not. And they want you. They want you to because mm-hmm. that's the only way they make money is by you leveraging it. And I want to say uh, just to everything that you just said, there are some people who feel like I'm not buying something if I don't have the cash to buy it. Well, that's the wrong mentality to have, you know, because here's the thing. If I have one hundred thousand dollars, why would I go tie up one hundred thousand in, in, in cash when I can use somebody else's money and make money off of it. Mm-hmm. I, I tell people you want to use your cash for in case emergency break glass. But if I can go to the bank and get a line of credit for 100000 it may cost me, let's say, a, a 700 to $1,500, depending on the interest rate. Mm-hmm. I just go find a vehicle, i.e. a property or buy a business that's going to pay me at least $2,000 a month. 
So now I'm servicing the debt on the debt and it's making me money and it costs me nothing out of my pocket. Do you think, all right, now I want to ask you this question because there's a lot of different people who have different views on, you know, money, on credit, right? What is something that you've done that is not a popular, um, like a, a popular concept? You Are know, you- so go ahead. Yeah, I use credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A lot of people, especially in our community, they're scared of debt. But that's because we don't understand that there's different there's different debt structures. Mm-hmm. Most of us are accustomed to what is called unstructured debt. This is when we buy a house we can't afford. Mm-hmm. We buy the car we can't afford. Most people are not familiar with what is called restructured debt. It's bankruptcy. But we've been looked at we've we've looked at bankruptcy in a negative in a negative way. But some of the richest people in the world are always filing for bankruptcy because they're, they're, they're protecting they're protecting their assets yeah. and it's restructuring. But the thing that I use that is unpopular, well, it's starting to become a little more popular. It's called structured debt. This is where I take debt from the bank, go buy debt, which is a property, and let the rents from the property service all of the debt and still make sure I have a return every month. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I use my debt. I use credit to go buy businesses, you know. And so these are the strategies and concepts that we haven't been taught because we haven't been taught about economics. It's bigger than money. It's a difference between economics and money, and that's what I try to teach people. Because I think about things that people tell me I shouldn't do. Like, for instance, I remember, I don't know if it was like Susie Orman. I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about um, real estate that's not great to invest in, right? That's a bad idea. And um, I think one of the things was condos that have an HOA fee. Correct. Right? But I feel like, because I do have one of those, um, but I feel like it's been my easiest investment. Well, I, I say you always just look at the numbers. Mm-hmm. See, I don't make uh, deals emotionally. Right. I don't care wh- if it's by the water or if it's near, uh, you know, in a in a C class neighborhood. As long as it can cash flow, that's what I focus on. Right. So believe it or not, e ninety percent of my real estate portfolio, I couldn't even tell you what the house looks like. <laughs> See, that's hard for me. Now, that's something that I always feel like if I'm buying. But I also don't have a huge like the stuff that I do is not um, high volume. Right. You know, like I have like a luxury property upstate New York. I have a condo in Williamsburg on the waterfront. So I like to do things that are more like a luxury property that I know it'll be. You know, just one because it's not what I do full time either. Definitely. And I do, you know, most recently, like we said, I bought that building in Detroit. That's my mm-hmm. biggest um, investment to date as yes, far as when you made the that 30 purchase. units. Yeah, yeah, me too. I sent you a DM too, by the way. Tech. Oh, Congratulations. Okay. I didn't get a reply. Uh, you know what? It's probably because we got to. I got to make sure I follow you so okay, I can see your DMs do, when I get do, them. Definitely. But I appreciate that because a lot of people had. I didn't even. Sometimes it's hard for me to talk about things that I'm doing because there's yeah. a lot of negativity uh, from people that are like, "Oh, you're just like." They'll be like, "Oh, you're just doing that for this reason, or you're doing that for that." And well, that's because they don't know any better. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people ask me, "Well, why do you buy properties in the hood?" And I'm saying, do you know that's where the money is at? <laughs> that's why it's called gentrification going on right yes, now. Yes. When you look at any major city that they are, their neighborhoods or the hood is near the downtown, that's where the money is pumping at. That's true. And, you know, I see that, especially in Brooklyn. We saw that in Harlem. And one thing I will say, people talk about gentrification, but it's been great for people who own. Definitely. And so if you were able to buy something when you had the opportunity or your family was able to do that and be able to pass that down to you in a place, a neighborhood that was affordable and then it gets gentrified, that is great for Definitely. somebody who was able to do that. It's unfortunate if you don't own something and now it's really difficult to rent and you're getting pushed out of of certain areas and you know that's hard because a lot of families I don't think I was raised with the mindset of let's invest in real estate my grandfather he used to always say save your money buy a house he just used to say that like that was it no direction or anything more (laughs) than that and I watched him build his house from scratch in the West Indies when he retired he left the house that we grew up in to my mom when he moved and retired and so that's how we even you know, my parents even owned a home. Correct. Yeah, no, I agree. And and I think the thing is because we don't know enough about enough. Mm -hmm. We don't, we're not taught ownership. Matter of fact, in a black and brown community, especially the black community, home ownership has went from as high as 47% to about 41% now. Mm -hmm. So it's actually decreasing in our community, but that's because we look at home ownership as this like uh, unattainable obstacle, not knowing it's actually easier to get approved for a home than a credit card. (laughs) <laughs> is it? Yeah, because for a house, you can get approved at a 580. A credit card, you need a 680 to a 700. But your interest will be really high. The interest is irrelevant. 
mm-hmm. especially as an investor. Well, okay, as an investor, yes. Yeah. What was your first property that you purchased? Pro- personal or mm-hmm. investment? Personal. Uh, my first property I bought, it was for 250000 in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, and then investment. What was your first property? Uh, it was a property in Cleveland, Ohio, in East Cleveland. I paid 25000 for it on a credit card. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, amazing. Definitely. Okay. I can show you how I did it, too, Yeah, tell me, tell me. Definitely. So, essentially, it's it's a strategy. So, if I have credit, mm-hmm. okay, all I have to do is calculate how much the credit is going to cost me. It's all numbers. So, I know if the property is going to cost me, it's no different than if I have a mortgage. So, if I pull 25000 from a line of credit and it's going to cost me, let's say, 600 bucks, mm-hmm. the property was already cash flowing. See, okay. I only buy turnkey properties. I don't buy properties I have to go in and rehab because there's too much that can take place that I can't control. Trust me, I know I'm dealing with that. <laughs> it it's happened a to nightmare. me. But but I'm it's glad I went through that because yeah. it was the mistake I needed that took me on a path to doing only turnkey. So the property was turnkey and already $975 a month. This was in 2018. And so the the, the, the rents is going to cover the debt. Mm-hmm. And now not only do I have an asset that I can hold and, 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 and make money off of forever, but then if I wanted to get liquid, all I do, I don't sell my property, G. I do what's called a cash out refinance. Mm-hmm. This way I can borrow up to 80% of the value of the home completely tax free. Is that like an equity Line of credit? So or a home that- equity line of credit is something, it's like taking a second on your house or a line of credit on your property, mm-hmm. which typically you can only do that on your primary residency. Okay. On an investment property, you do a, a, a refinance where you're pulling uh, money out against the equity of the property. Okay. But the, the, the whole concept of why I want to share that and what I want the listeners to know why that's so powerful, this is why wealthy people don't save money in the banks. Mm-hmm. They tuck them into assets, and then when they want to get liquid, they refinance they the property okay. because it's tax-free. I was telling one of my friends that the other day, if you have too much money in the bank, then there's an issue. You're losing money. Yeah, because that money's not working for you. At the interest all. that you'll get on money that's sitting in the bank is nothing compared to what you can get if you make um, an investment. But some people are also scared, right, that it might be a bad investment. Or how do I know how to even get started? Who do I even trust? So here's the thing. We, I tell people, let's take the emotions out in, in the whole trust factor. You just have to know fifth grade math. <laughs> you know, so if I know if I have $100,000, okay, and I go and buy a property, I find a property that's just going to cash flow. Mm-hmm. And unless your property is in an unlivable condition, somebody is always going to want to rent it because we all have to live yeah, somewhere. Let's just be honest. But here's why people get in trouble in real estate, Angela. They overbuy. They buy the property that they want to live in. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it makes it unattainable from a cash flowing standpoint because the rents won't service the debt or they put family members in or they don't run it like a business. <laughs> See, I run my real estate portfolio like a business. I'm definitely more emotional when it comes to. See, we got to help you remove <laughs> that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie. I'm de- and I've learned like I've had definitely. issues with tenants. And Are you like- placing a tenants, though? So only in one scenario, okay. and I will not do that again. We got to get you a property management team. Yeah, yeah. I actually have one now. Okay, good So stuff. I'm in the process of trying to uh, remedy that situation. Definitely. But it was a learning lesson, like you said, right. for me, for me trying to help somebody and being really nice about even the amount of money that they pay. Um, and then, you know, some people will never, it's never enough. Ever. Yeah, And then you get the calls on Christmas it, and Come on, yeah, I got to buy presents, mm-hmm. and then they don't want to pay you rent. So I just removed that emotion. My tenants don't even know I'm the owner because all of my property is under, under an LLC. So Yeah, and yeah. I do have LLCs for all of my property, and that's another thing that I stuff. learned to do. But, you know, even for me doing, like, my first ever Airbnb upstate, right. it's a beautiful property. Definitely. But it's a lot of things that I didn't take into account when I actually purchased it. You know, fortunately, it is paying for itself, right. you know, in that space, so I'm grateful for that. But... If I had to do things differently, now I know, you know, so it hasn't been uh, awful, but it also, I'm like, okay, I messed up here, I messed up with this, right. and the next one that I do is going to be a little different. So I think you kind of answered your question was, how do you protect a bad investment? It's paying for itself. Mm-hmm. So we have to understand that sometimes breaking even is a win. Yeah, it is a win. Because I feel like. <laughs> we lose so often with a lot of investments, but at the end of the day, and I always say, when you buy real estate the right way, because you make your money at the purchase. Mm-hmm. If you buy it the right way, if things hit the fan, 
you could sell that property and at least break even. Yeah. And if I sold that property, I would make money because See? it's worth more than when I bought it a couple of years ago already. So, so, so we'll be up. in a, a win-win situation. So I got a place to stay when I need to go there, right? Yes, you do. Okay. Y'all heard See, that. Y'all, almost, y'all heard but that, right? the, But the business side of me is like, well, talk to the realtor. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I do always try to hook up my friends. Like Definitely. if one of my friends hits me up, because I think part of me even having that is a space where I can go to, but where I can also let my friends you know, be able to use it as well. Absolutely. Definitely. Which is not very business-like of me. <laughs> definitely. At all That's why way. you get a manager. Let them be the liaison. <laughs> now, so. let's talk about some of the quote-unquote <clears throat> failures, too, and what you learned from that. Uh, man, so on the real estate side, I think the biggest one is the emotional part. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't buy stuff because it's pretty. I buy stuff I because it's profitable. I'd be like, this is amazing. See, and yeah. that's where people get messed <laughs> up at, ye. And so uh, people get jammed up. And again, that's why I don't necessarily go look at the properties. So mm-hmm. here's how what I normally do. My realtor will send me a deal and uh, we'll run the numbers. I'm like, okay, bet. The numbers make sense. Here's the potential rents. Or a lot of my properties already have tenants in there. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll send my home inspector over there. As long as the home inspector... Uh, Make sure that the four main points that I look for to qualify, I'm looking at roofing, I'm looking at the uh, foundation, Mm -hmm. heating, plumbing, and uh, uh, electrical. Right. As long as those things check out and everything else is cosmetic, I'm good. And as long as I know it can cash flow and it can service the debt, then I'm fine with that. Outside of that, those are typically the biggest mistakes people make is they either buy with emotion or they buy and they're trying to do everything themselves or they are, you know, utilizing all of their money. The The biggest one is one of your hiring contractors. <laughs> I tell people if you're a new investor and you're trying to do real estate flipping and you're calling contractors, they usually see the word sucker on your forehead. Absolutely. Because they're going to over they're going to underbid you, they're going to bust open the walls and then now they're going to say, "Okay, ye, we got a $10,000 uh, plumbing issue." So there's just too many things that can go wrong, and I believe in what's called velocity of money. Mm-hmm. How fast I can put it out there and how fast I can get it back. So I mitigate, you know, all of the the errors that can go wrong by either doing turnkey Mm-hmm. Or buying things that I don't have to go in and do a bunch of rehab at because it puts me in a position to make my money back immediately. Are you more of a hold and sell type That's of person it. or a flipping person? I, I, I hold. I don't. I don't flip real estate because when you think about wealth, people think making money or making a lot of money is being wealthy. But when you look up the definition in the layman's terms of wealth is an accumulation of assets. Mm -hmm. If I sell all of Big Mama's houses or in my case, when I got rid of all of my grandfather's houses, nothing in our family is going to pay us for the rest of our lives. So I have to hold my real estate. And this is why I'm so passionate. This is why I've been traveling the country for the past seven years on my own dime, going out, doing free workshops, doing pop up events and and why I'm writing books and doing all of these things, because nobody is really teaching us these concepts. Mm -hmm. These are all concepts that we're not being taught. Now, some people also feel like, well, does credit matter if I have cash? Absolutely. What you, okay. Because why would I use all my <laughs> Why would I use all my cash when I can go and play with the bank's money? Because I always hear people say that. Well, if I have cash and credit doesn't really matter, it's no big deal. And I don't know where that line of thinking came from. And so this is what I tell people. All right, let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars g cash, mm-hmm. and I have a hundred thousand dollars worth of credit. Once your hundred thousand dollars of cash runs out, how much do you have left? Zero. But guess what? I can go to another bank and get another hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. So I'll always have access to capital. How are you when it comes to paying off properties? What are your thoughts on that? Great you, question, because I know you paid off your house not too long ago. I paid off. Right? Well, I <laughs> no. Listen, I've paid off um, the first house I ever bought, plus uh-huh. the condo in Williamsburg, plus I bought you know everything cash. Um, except for the building in Detroit. So the house I have there is paid for Correct. because it was $25,000. Definitely. And no, then, absolutely. Yeah. So here's my concept about that. Uh, when we hear the term debt free, most people, I think, think you should not owe anybody. But debt free, it should be consumer debt. Wasteful credit card spending debt, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. When it comes to paying off a property, It depends on your scenario. For me personally, that's not necessarily a goal of mine Mm -hmm. because I'm going to always leverage the debt. So, for example, if I have a a string of properties and let's say I eventually pay them off, I'm going to now do what's called a a portfolio loan, which means I'm going to go and get a loan against all five properties and then go and use that money to go buy another bigger property, whether it's a multifamily, whether it's a commercial building, which I bought an old historical bank in Milwaukee. So mm-hmm. uh, so I'm always going to leverage the debt to go make me more money because the goal is 
every single dollar or every single credit dollar, my goal is to get at least a 2.5x return on that. And I look at every dollar as an employee. Mm -hmm. So you deploy money, you deploy capital, you don't hold it and save it and put it in the bank. Right. No, I know that's something. But you know what? I I still feel like relieved. I, <laughs> right. I do have mortgages still, no, but there's okay. those things that I've I've paid off. So and at least I feel I feel off. stable with yeah. those. And yeah. then I have the other things. It makes me not nervous because right. I always yeah. know I have these assets that, if necessary, I can just be like, all right, well, we'll just you know sell this. If don't sell them, you, you I'm not, borrow I haven't... against them. You <laughs> borrow because see, when you sell it, guess what you got to do. Pay taxes? Taxes. Unless you do a 1031 exchange yeah, and then you can get something try, else. But uh, why not just borrow against it and don't pay any taxes? Right. No, and you're you going right. to get the same amount. Now, let's talk about what you have going on, though, yes. with your, co- uh, your coaching program. Yeah, so my REI 90 program, which stands for Real Estate Investing, where I target three different, you know, prototypes. The newbies, uh, people who I call, like, lifelong strugglers, people mm-hmm. who, are, who have been trying to double dutch their way into real estate but can't seem to get a grip, and then the future planners. And so, essentially, I have a step-by-step uh, process of concepts that teach people how to buy real estate, but how to build a real estate team. And I've purchased all my properties literally from my iPhone, ye. <laughs> meaning like it's really just it's it's all numbers. Right. And, and I try to teach people how to remove the emotions. I actually have a webinar coming up August 30th where it's a free webinar online. I'm going to be teaching people these concepts where I'm going to be primarily focusing on speaking to the newbies, show them not only how to find real estate deals, what constitutes a good deal. I'm even show them how to get the money from the banks to do the real estate. So you can have zero dollars mm-hmm. and I'm going to show you how to get to the properties. And then September 30th, I'm actually doing an in-person event in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, nice. where we're actually going to rent buses and take them into the communities. I'm going to show them how to evaluate deals. I'm going to have my contractor there. I'm going to have my uh, property manager there, my lender, my banker. I mean, I have a banker uh, who lends for properties with, with what is called a DSCR loan, which mm-hmm. stands for Debt Service Coverage Ratio Loan. Uh, essentially, they'll finance any deal as long as it has a one-to-one ratio. Okay. So if the mortgage is 1000 as long as the rent is at least 1000 or more, they'll finance the deal. They'll put it under your business name so that debt is not on your personal debt. And uh, it also protects you from getting into bad deals because right. now you can't go get a deal that's worth this and the rent is here. So you can't it won't service get financed. it. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so we even have different things that I teach people how to put things in place to protect themselves so they don't get jammed up. How about instinct? What part does instinct play when it comes to purchasing or investing in real estate? Or do you feel like it's only I got to talk to my, you know, my accountant, I have to do this, I have to do that. Or sometimes are you like my gut is telling me don't do this or my gut is telling me to to go for it. So I'm one that believes that you should always follow your instinct, Mm -hmm. whether it's in relationships, whether it's in money or whatever. But I I can remove all of that by just looking at the numbers. Mm -hmm. So I often say you can be successful uh, in real estate and business because it's all fifth grade math. Because sometimes we can't predict. Like, I think even in Harlem, when people had opportunities to invest there, but people didn't have the vision to see what it could be, or even in Brooklyn as neighborhoods are changing, or in Detroit, some people that live there. I can tell you why that's the case, Mm -hmm. because people are trying to get rich off of one deal. Okay. When people chase equity, which means, hey, let me buy high and hope that it goes to this. That's the wrong type of mentality to have. If the goal is, hey, let me just build like the game of Monopoly. <laughs> you, When you go across boardwalk, you're not going based off of instinct that somebody's going to land on there and make money. You're going to buy the boardwalk because right. if somebody lands on the boardwalk on Monopoly, what happens? Right. I got to pay you. Yep. And so that's no different than how real estate works. As long as it's making money. I'm going to buy it because when we think about business as a whole, I don't go and start a business because of the instinct. Oh, I think my burgers are going to do well. I'm going in knowing, hey, I make great burgers. I have a great product. Here's my numbers. It makes sense. I'm going to sell it. So once you remove the emotion and do it strictly off the numbers, I don't go and get my accountant's permission. I just make sure that, you know, they make sure my books are good, Mm -hmm. you know, so I can remove all of that stigma and the emotion. How do you make sure that when people are vetting you out that they can understand, look, these are the people that have successfully, you know, went through my program. These are people that I've coached. They've seen success. Where can people find that information? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I believe is that bad news travels faster than good news. Mm -hmm. And if if you're out there jamming people up and putting them in bad situations, it'll be out there. You know, I tell people just follow my journey, follow my progress. 
uh, my results speak for themselves. See, my thing is, is I'm never trying to convince somebody to do business with me. Ye. My <laughs> thing is, is let me show you the results. Come or don't. Come yeah. or don't. Yeah. But then more importantly, I'm not asking you for your money. Mm-hmm. See, this is why I think people get jammed up. Let's say you're doing a project. And, and I'm like, come invest with me. Yeah, you're like, hey, park <laughs> your money with me. I'm Angela Yee, and this, and as great as you are, you know, but you, like you say, that's not what you do full time. Mm-hmm. And so then we're entrusting that my money gets flipped with you, but then you're giving me some unbelievable terms like, hey, I'm going to flip it to 50% in 90 days. Yeah. That's not practical. You can't even do that in the streets, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so that's where that instinct and common sense that yes. I believe has to come into where I'm saying, look, ye. I don't want your money. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to use your own money, your own ingenuity. I'm going to give you the concepts and 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 you dictate your own return. Apply it in real life. You you apply it. Mm -hmm. I'll give you all of the tools. I'll even give you my resources. But I don't want I'm not I'm not taking your money. I I can go to the bank and get as much money as I want. So I don't even want the responsibility of anybody. Everything that I've done, I've had the latest project I had like a couple of my friends invest with me and we did it together and they were able to go through the whole process with me, you know, and either do it or don't know my feelings, but, um, you know, they're really happy they did it. So I just (laughs) want to say that, but I also wanted to be able to walk through doing something like a 30 unit building that I've never done before so that when people ask me about it, I want to feel more educated on telling them what to do rather than me just, well, this is what you're supposed to do. Right. It's more like, this is what I did. And another thing too, even with that, is that sometimes people don't do their own due diligence right. sometimes we have to take the drug called accountability ourselves <laughs> like what made me think that? Right, right not only that like if you bring me a deal and i'm like okay you what what llc is this going under mm-hmm. and you're like uh no this is going under my name like i'm not doing that deal i need to see paperwork lawyers need to be involved the money is going in escrow i'm not sending it to your bank account so we got us and that's the thing that i, I tell people and i wrote this in my book full-time yeah. ceo we have to learn about business yes but we're not learning the the just the basics about business if you tell me it's under your name i'm not doing that deal but you know what let's end it with that let's talk about with will roundtree just give people some tips if you're doing something that you should watch out for and um so that when people are doing things if they are planning to invest uh whatever it is that they're doing what are some things that you are saying you should look out for because like you said don't send the money to a person what is the llc right. like what are some things that you should look out for? how much time we got because i could go for go three ahead, days I'm listening. <laughs> i want to hear this so i mean bottom line and i think it's important information no, Absolutely. Bottom line, first of all, let's start with our instinct. Let's do our own due diligence. Mm-hmm. Now, if 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 somebody is wanting to do business with me or I'm looking to do business, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check out to see if they have a credible business. Right. You'd be surprised how many people are doing these projects and you go to the secretary of state and their business is not active. OK, so literally find out what that person business entity is or what entity that project is going to be tied to. And you can go to that state's secretary of state and look it up for free to even see if it's active or not. Then you want to find out who are all of the men, the managing members on there. If it's an okay. LLC, there'll be managing members. If it's an incorporation, it'll be uh, 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 directors and presidents and all of that. And if it's an S corp, it's probably still tied to either an LLC or an incorporation. Next is how are you sending the money? Mm-hmm. If you're doing it through an escrow account, which typically is a, 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 a you know a, a, an account that an attorney or a title company where they hold the money, and it can't commingle with. It can't else, commingle so with anything else. Right. Then that w- that means that at least your money is protected. If someone say, "Hey, send me a cash app or wire the money to my <laughs> bank account," I won't even do business with people right. with cash app. I, I got beat up on Facebook for saying that. <laughs> but if somebody told me to send them a cash app, I'm not doing it. They don't sponsor this, right? No, I'm kidding. Okay, <laughs> okay. Go okay. Ahead. okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if they tell me to wire it to their personal or even business bank account. I'm not doing it. So you want to watch out for those signs Uh, more. And then secondly, find out what type of project is involved. Who are all of the players that's involved with the project when it comes to real estate? Mm -hmm. I don't care if my mama's selling me a house. Sorry, mama. I know you might be watching, (laughs) but I'm using a title company. Right. I've actually had clients and mentees who have went and bought real estate from other people. They wired the money to somebody's bank account or, quote, unquote, the seller. And then that seller took the money and sold the property again. Oh, because they didn't have the title. You recorded. don't have the title. So I'm only doing things, making sure that my money is going through an escrow account or a title company. And I'm going to use an attorney. Mm-hmm. See, a, a thing a lot of people don't realize is that 
when you are doing a real estate transaction, the attorney doesn't necessarily charge you a bunch of money to review the contract. They don't charge. They, they're going to be there to protect you. And so it may cost you five hundred dollars to use that attorney, but put it on a credit card. Right. Let, like let. So we have to stop cutting corners because I, I, I say often that cutting corners or taking shortcuts is expensive. Right. Yes, you're absolutely it's right. It's expensive. And Protect so yourself. You got to do it right or pay twice. And yeah. that's what and I tell And if you don't people. have the money to pay for an attorney or to pay then for Then you probably can't yeah, do the deal. Yeah, it's not the time to do it. It's not the time to do the deal. Because I think people also want to rush into doing real estate. And sometimes financially, it may not be. But you said you can do it for zero dollars. Well, when but, I say zero dollars, uh, yeah. meaning, because let me clear that up. Yeah, clear that I, up. I'm going to be on the blogs. <laughs> let, me clear, <laughs> let me clear this up. When I say zero dollars, I'm saying... I don't necessarily have to use my money. Right. I can go to the bank. If you have credit. Got to have good credit, mm -hmm. get a line of credit, and then I'm going to use the bank's money to do the deal. Mm -hmm. So can we put the closed yeah, captions under there too? There. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So I, I just try to keep it simple. I love to have fun at what I'm doing. But, yeah, use your intuition. Hire, be a professional at hiring professionals. Mm -hmm. Like if, if, if I know that I don't know how to read contracts because I don't read legalese, I'm going to hire an attorney. It may cost me two, three hundred dollars. Right. Look, just don't go turn up that weekend Listen, and put I'm that towards your attorney. I'm always going to hire an attorney yeah, to look at a contract yeah. when it comes to something like that. I don't, even though I've done deals, I'm never going to try to Ever. just do that. I don't myself. even sign birthday cards, she, without my attorney. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it might be some fine print in there. I don't know. I got to be careful out here. All right. Well, Will Roundtree, thank you so much. And how can Definitely. people find you and how can they also uh, sign up for the Real Estate Investing 90 coaching program? Yeah, so they can follow me across all social media platforms at Mr. Will Roundtree, mm -hmm. at Mr. Will Roundtree. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they can actually go online to uh, RoundtreeMasterclass.com. The webinar is free 99. Okay. So it's, 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 it's for the free ski. And so go on there, like I say. Uh, and again, I'm not here to convince people. That's right. not my job. And my job is just to give people enough information so they can make an educated decision for themselves. And those people who are intrigued enough and want to do it, then do it. And also don't feel like you can be lazy once you Absolutely. get in there, do the coaching. You also have work to do after that. You do. That. Oh, can I say something real quick to mm -hmm. that? I want people to know that you're not going to get rich overnight doing real estate. Right. And I think that's where people get messed up at ye because they go in saying, hey, let me flip this money real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me leave my job. And it doesn't work <laughs> like that. I right. tell people real estate should be a retirement plan. And it's and like the stock market, it. too. You're not going to get rich overnight, you definitely you know, uh, doing stocks. It's very rare that something hits in that way. So That was that was a once in a million with GameStop and everything. Yeah, so, yeah. but no, definitely. And it went bad for some people. Right. So. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thank you so much for no, joining us. You. I do really appreciate it. You know, I love talking about real estate and I'm trying to learn things myself. So Absolutely. today I feel like well, I have some work to do. Well, you, since you're going to follow me now, now you can hit me up and say, hey, Will, what do I do <laughs> do in this situation? This? So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. It's a Absolutely. Wealth Wednesday with Mr. Will Roundtree. <laughs> <laughs>